Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology. Nice to see you back and I had made a video on how powerful is your sun and many of you have requested me to make a similar video on how powerful is your Saturn. Okay, so today we shall discuss on Saturn exclusively. So here is an example chart. So last time you said, uh, could you please explain with an example. So here. I will demonstrate uh, certain principles which you can use to check how powerful is your Saturn, right? And if you check in this chart, you will see that it is a Gemini rising. So Saturn by default becomes a trinal lord, which means he is by, by nature very auspicious. Now for Gemini, he is also the 8th lord which means he can also be inauspicious at times. That depends on how Saturn is and to what extent is Saturn uh, able to function properly in the chart. Okay. So now the first thing is pretty obvious. We check where Saturn is placed. So Saturn is placed here in the 10th house which means uh, he... He has the power to give a lot of uh, name and fame and some authority position to this person. But it's not so simple, you know, oh, Saturn is in the 10th, a uh, lot of good things will come. Well, definitely it will come, but uh, we cannot just give a simplistic answer, right? And so let's analyze in detail. So what's going on? You, the next thing you should check is which sign Saturn is placed in, okay? The nature of the sign. So many times people get confused which is more important house or the sign well both are important they have their own advantages and disadvantages and own uh, individualized uh, specialized areas i would say they have their own importance they do not cancel out each other so for example uh, you know jupiter and saturn they are almost neutral to each other so for Saturn to sit in uh, signs of Jupiter is neutral uh, in the sense it depends on what is the overall flow of the chart. So for here, for example, here, let's talk individually for he's in Pisces. So Pisces can be very good or very bad. So Pisces is the sign which tells you that do your best and leave the rest. Should I repeat? Pisces tells you do your best and leave the rest to God. But uh, this can have a lot of negative connotations also. So for example, if Saturn is in Pisces, this can make a person very lazy and not wanting to work and always blaming destiny. Somewhat like the example of Dhritarashtra in Mahabharata. Now I'm not saying that he had Saturn in Pisces, but this is just an example. He always used to blame destiny. That, oh, destiny is cruel upon me. It made me blind. But it is his own karma, right? Uh, but if this is positive, uh, if the overall chart is positive, this can be a very good placement because the, uh, this placement can give the person the ability to uh, work in a way uh, which is very detached and not getting obsessed about results and uh, about things which are beyond your control. So this is the this is like two sides of the coin. So where will uh, which direction will this flow? So this is the nature of the fla flavor of the planet, but the house will tell in which area this happens. So because this is tenth house, now uh, this person can either be very detached towards uh, his name, fame, career, position, power, status, authority. Or the person can be very lazy. The person may not want to take up any opportunity, you know, unless it is given given uh, to him by you know by will of destiny. Okay, the person may not want to work much. Okay, this can be giving laziness when it comes to finances and career. So that is uh, the second step. But now you check the third thing, which is. Uh, where is the nakshatra lord of Saturn sitting? So, which nakshatra is Saturn? He is in 3 degree of Pisces, which is Purva Bhadra Pada 4. And if you know Purva Bhadra Pada, oh sorry, I made a mistake. The third thing you have to check is where is the dispositor of the sign? Okay. So, here Saturn is in Pisces, so number 12. So, that means the dispositor is Jupiter. He is exalted in the second house. So this can give great financial opportunity if the person works hard. 
okay so then rule number four is you check where is the nakshatra lord sitting this this is more important than rule number three because we know that nakshatras are more powerful than the planets okay uh, i mean nakshatras don't uh, become powerful as in literally but the nakshatra lords which means the planets which rule the nakshatra they are more powerful than the planet planet sitting in this house okay so for example if this jupiter would have been in scorpio uh, capricorn or taurus this would have been uh, quite a challenging position okay but because this is in the second house this can be a very good position for finances and wealth and see the dispositor and the nakshatra lord is jupiter okay so you, you, you have to use the natural significations of this planet also so if suppose this saturn uh, was here in aries okay in the 10th house suppose this was a cancer ascendant chart so then 10th house would be aries so then if saturn would be in aries hmm, or let's take the opposite if uh, oh no this is a far good example i guess so if saturn would be in aries and then mars would be the dispositor so then what would happen is uh, ignoring that is debilitated but the nux the dispositor of the planet will tell you uh, what kind of things do you need to improve the significations of that planet so for example here if it was aries here instead of pisces then the person would have needed to use lot of dominance power and lot of punishment mars is punishment but here what is jupiter jupiter here he is in pisces so jupiter is the lord so and he is also the nakshatra lord you see so this becomes uh, doubly important so therefore we have to tell this person that you you have to be a very jupiterian personality so uh, this does not mean he ha does not have to work hard but the thing is he himself have to work has to work hard because it is saturn and is saturn the sa also was there in the mid mid of his life you know when he was at the age of 20 he was in late 20s then the saturn the sa started 27 years of age <coughs> so then we will under, we have to tell him that um, whenever saturn dasha comes you work hard but uh, you have to be bit forgiving to people and because the jupiter is exalted people will like you very much because of that okay now if the jupiter will be debilitated suppose it was in capricorn then what would happen is people uh, would say that oh you are not a good leader you don't punish people punish not punish in the sense you are very soft on people you know you if somebody has done a mistake you do not uh, you do not make them pay for that mistake okay by any means not financial but now because he is exalted uh, whenever he is uh, very forgiving then people will like him very much actually okay so this means this jupiter is actually helping him all right so from all the sides we see that saturn is quite strong in the chart then uh, the next principle that you need to see is uh, this you can do for any other planet also okay you have to check uh, which planets are sitting in either libra or capricorn or aquarius why do i say this and you also have to check which planets are sitting in aries okay why do i say this because Libra is a is the exaltation sign of Saturn, okay, and Aries is the debilitation sign, <coughs> and Capricorn and Aquarius they are Saturn's own signs. So, if a plan if there are planets which are in Libra or Capricorn or Aquarius, they can help this Saturn because the overall Saturnian traits will enhance in the horoscope, okay, because these are energies where Saturn is very powerful. and if there are too many planets in aries then it can happen that that person has challenges in um, executing saturnian traits okay why because the enemy of the sun uh, enemy of saturn which is sun gets exalted in aries okay so now if you check i mean uh, almost except two planets except jupiter and rahu all the planets are in libra capricorn and aquarius just see this moon is in uh, libra then mars is in libra ketu is in libra then mercury and sun now mercury is very crucial here why because he is the lagnesh okay and sun and moon are the luminary so sun moon and ascendant lord if they are also present in a uh, placed in libra 
Capricorn or Aquarius, then this becomes powerful. And also, if Saturn's friends like uh, Mercury, Venus, Rahu, they are also in either of these signs, then it's very good. So now you see uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, six planets in these three signs. So this is enhancing the power of Saturnian traits in the chart. So these uh, these planets will make the horoscope more prone towards Saturnian traits. Okay. Now the problem is uh, like every other horoscope, uh, no horoscope is perfect. Uh, so here Rahu is in the sign of Aries. Okay. So. Now uh, Rahu may pose some challenges. Okay, so what what kind of challenges he may pose? He is in the eleventh house of gains and network circles. So now it's very peculiar. Now eleventh house from the Lagna is great for gains. Okay, no doubt about it. So now what what can happen is uh, when Rahu Dasha comes, this uh, a person can have lot of gains undoubtedly and. Uh, this can make the person very lazy so this can harm the saturnian traits which is you know hard work and all these things so although from the lagna he is gaining externally he is gaining a lot of money but because uh, he is in aries a, a planet in aries uh, can uh, be not very good for saturn okay and this can be through uh, sources like uh, unorthodox sources okay like uh, so for example uh, if this person is working a nine to five job and uh, then it can happen that uh, he is getting some money from some uh, some other work which he's doing in the weekends and because of that he can become a bit lazy and uh, he may not focus on his uh, own life purpose okay because remember 11th house does not give life purpose the 10th house gives you the life purpose okay although the 11th house they say is three times more powerful than the 10th house when it comes to money but it still does not give you life purpose it just gives you finances okay i mean of course it can give you a marriage also if it is related to second and seventh but here we are talking in context of the 10th house so now the thing is um, this is how you analyze and then you also check uh, what is the situation of uh, saturn's friends okay what uh, are the friends actually helping so mercury venus mercury and venus they are in saturnian signs so they are actually uh, they are not helping saturn directly but indirectly because they the saturn is the dispositor so saturn feels more responsible because the dispositor of a planet protects that planet so mercury venus is protected by saturn okay and um, the then you check Rahu. Rahu, uh, well, uh, not much uh, helping because he's in Aries. And then what about his enemies? You also have to check where his enemies are placed. Okay. Now uh, his enemies are Sun, Moon, and Mars. So where is where 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 are these three placed? All all these three they are in Libra. Both two of them and one of them is in Capricorn. So now. Uh, it's it's like saying the enemies are also forced to help Saturn. Okay, uh, but this won't happen easily. Uh, this will happen after a lot of hard work. Why? Because uh, if you check from Saturn, these two are uh, in the eighth house. Okay, that is not very good placement. So this won't happen easily. But eventually, because this is in Libra, the energy of Saturn will be enhanced. Okay. So yeah, it's a very peculiar position uh, that uh, this Saturn is the overall chart has a lot of Saturn energies, but somehow uh, this is not well placed from Saturn. So this means that when he tries to work hard, he may face a lot of opposition and all this. But the good thing here is uh, it is in fifth house from the Lagna. So this will bring a lot of uh, auspiciousness into the person's life. Okay. So. Well, this is how you judge your Saturn and then uh, you also have to check uh, multiple things actually. So for example, um, you have to check uh, the placement of the Nakshatra Lord of Sun. So where is Sun? Sun? And this you have to check for any planet actually, not only Saturn. Okay. So and then you check where is Sun's Nakshatra Lord. So Sun 
is in Capricorn nakshatra, uh, sorry, in uh, Shravan nakshatra, in the sign of Capricorn. So, Shravan is ruled by the moon. Moon is again in Libra, you see. Very good. Then, what about the moon? Moon is uh, sitting in Libra itself. Very good. Like sun is in Capricorn and it's in Swati nakshatra. Okay. Now, moon is not very much able to help because uh, Swati's ruler is Rahu, although Rahu is a friend, but now he's in Aries. Okay. So, not that great. Then what about Mars? Mars is in Chitra Nakshatra, own Nakshatra. So, again, not very good. But at least they are in Libra. So, planetary-wise, they are trying to help, okay, if not by the level of Nakshatra. Okay, then you also check uh, Mercury. Mercury is in Dhanishtha Nakshatra. Again, in Capricorn, but in the Nakshatra of uh, Mars, okay. So, again, Mars is again in uh, Libra, not very good as a friend, and a friend because he is an enemy, uh, but he is in Libra. So, so the Libra energy is quite saving Saturn, if you check here. So, Libra can make the person very balanced and uh, this can help enhance the traits of Saturn, okay. And apart from this, you can also use uh, different Jaimini principles. If you check here, uh, who is the Atma Karak? It is Mercury, 28 degrees, highest degree here. So he is again in Capricorn. See, again the Saturn energy is very strong. He is also the Lord of Lagna. Okay, he is again in Capricorn. So this is enhancing the power of the chart actually. Okay, and uh, Saturn in general also, they say he is very good in the Upacha houses like 3, 6, 10, and 11. So, if you check in the Navamsa chart also, he is in the 6th house of enemies. So, he, he, he can crush all his enemies okay, by hard work. So, this is how you can analyze uh, your Saturn. And uh, you can analyze so many other things. Like, for example, his ascendant nakshatra is Ardra, which is Rahu. Uh, which is not actually helping uh, Saturn. Okay, so... Uh, therefore, uh, during during Saturn's Mahadasha, he can feel that although he is gaining a lot of things, but he is not moving towards uh, what he should be doing. Okay, so these things can happen. If the Ascendant Nakshatra Lord does not help this planet, okay, uh, the Mahadasha Lord, I mean, okay, so yeah, uh, this is how you can understand, and this is how you judge your Saturn. So. Uh, we cannot give a binary answer. So, like I gave you six, seven principles. So, you cannot do like this. You know, oh, out of seven or eight, I I get five. My dear friend, how much do you get? You get three. I get two. He gets seven. He gets eight. No, you cannot do like this. This is not simple mathematics. Okay, this is a way to approach a planet. So, when you do a analysis of one planet these are the things which you should take care these are the things which you should use when you want to predict something for a client otherwise you just tell him oh saturn is in 10th house so it's good for name fame but the person is like okay but uh, what what are the things which are good how should i be how will i get this name and fame like i said using jupiterian traits okay uh, what are the things that can oppose me like rahu in the 11th can oppose you okay uh, although 11th house gives you gain so this is very peculiar because if you don't tell this then the person will think oh my Saturn Rahu Dasha has started Rahu Antar Dasha I will get great, great name and fame but then later on he may end up in trouble because of that okay because Mahadasha Lord is Saturn okay so uh, instead of playing this uh, useless mathematics you know like out of 8 7 it is 3 4 like this it, it won't help you so uh, even if it is 1 out of 8 or uh, even if it is 2 out of it, if, when you rate your uh, client's horoscope, then you must be able to tell the person, what if those two factors are very strong? So, let me give you an example. In this horoscope, you, ch you see the Nakshatra Lord is so powerful, okay? And the dispositor also is Jupiter. Both are Jupiter, of, of Saturn, I mean. So, this even if this two factors are supportive and all the other factors are not supportive this this itself is great to give him great big huge success okay so so instead of saying oh your saturn is like you know two out of eight is like a 20 percent good 80 percent bad so uh, we should not play all this useless stupid games okay when it comes to astrology we should be very specific and we should explain to the person properly that these are the things where you can get gains these are the things where you might suffer all right 
so only then we can help somebody otherwise you are just going on uh, playing mathematics suppose i tell you oh your saturn is 50 percent good then the person is like okay but what do i make out of it in my life where do i go where do i not go okay so you just leave the person in oblivion without any conclusion all right so therefore make a detailed analysis uh, of your client wherever you are consulting because many of you uh, have started uh, giving consultations after watching my astrology basics and omg astrology secrets playlist so therefore i am making this video all right so i hope this helps you and if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation from me regarding your horoscope you can always go to my website down below and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who wants to know about saturn and if you want to see other videos on saturn i will put it up okay in the Tags, ops. Okay, thank you.